This is the Fantasy Road Show. We are live. We are live. We are live. Welcome into another episode of the Fantasy Road Show. This episode is brought to you by Rule One Proteins. If you guys don't know, you probably should know by now. Rule One's the best in the business. They got the best protein powder, the best supplements, the best vitamins. You name it, they got it. Go check them out at www.ruleoneproteins.com. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Go check us out on social media at Fantasy Roadshow everywhere you can. Check out the Substack, the Fantasy Roadshow.substack.com for all of our fantasy articles written by Shane. He does some great work over there, so go check it out. You guys know the drill. My name is Truck, and I'm joined, as always, by Culls and Shane O'Mac. And today we are talking NFC South Divisional Breakdown, second episode in the series. I'm excited to talk about this division. Uh, but before we get into that, boys, how are we doing? Culls, how, how's your uh, how's your day going? It's all good. Um, in the middle of a move, moving to close to the old Barton Springs, um, one of my favorite parts of Austin slash the United States. So I'm excited. Okay. I got my nice. camo tigers. Oh, good man. Go tigers. Um, just Go tigers. wanna, just wanna say that the fantasy roadshow supports the military. Um, <laughs> we support so, our troops. Yeah, we support the troops. Uh, and yeah, Shane and Mac, what's up with the Oregon Duck and John Deere look today? You like that? Yeah, like a little Phil Knight, you know, sponsorship going on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, oh, that bringing, is funny. Bringing Phil Knight's sponsor, his Nike sponsorship, down to the tennis world in Wichita, Kansas. Yep. Yeah, I got my. I, I woke up at six today, got a workout in, and then I did a couple hours of tennis. So, what I'm type set. of workout? So this was woke up at six, forty five minutes on the elliptical, get the legs loose and everything, and then two hours of tennis playing. Okay. Nice. I, I have a confession to make. I thought you said Bill Nye, and uh, now I kind of <laughs> want to see guy. you. Now I kind of want to see you do a Bill Nye parody. The Bill Nye Bill, science Bill, guy. Bill, 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 Bill. Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah. What well, today we are talking uh, divisional breakdown. But before we do that, let's let's talk about some news. We just got some guys got paid, right? J- uh, Jordan Love is the new highest paid quarterback in the history. Uh, right before him, it was Tua, and he is now the fourth highest paid quarterback in history. And um, Shane, I'm curious on your thoughts here because I'm a Bears fan, and I don't want to sound biased at all. But I'm curious: Do you think did, did Jordan Love deserve to be deserve right now to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL for that team, that organization? Yes, I would have done it because. They have nobody else on that team that they are paying or going to have to pay right away. I mean, even Jacobs is not that expensive. If they can get out after one year, if they want. And love, I think just, I think we talked about it on one of the shows recently where the eye test, like that twitchy athletic ability, and you just got to kind of push aside that first half of the season where he's getting used to a whole new set of offensive weapons and teams and once they found their groove as a team, that's when, you know, he started to take off. So and I think he, he won a playoff game. Yeah, he right? won a playoff game on the road that they were probably not favored by. I mean, they were probably underdogs by six, maybe if I remember. Yeah, yeah, probably. So. I think it was six, six and a half. Yeah. Who, who did they? Who who was that against? Jordan Love. Yeah. Who was that? Who they? Who they? Who they, who they beat? I don't know. Oh, you don't remember? <laughs> That's so long ago. Maybe the, maybe the, those the Cowboys over there. Um, in Dallas, that that doesn't seem right. No. Green oh, okay. Bay beating okay. Dallas in a playoff uh, game. Yeah, and, right. Yeah. It's just Lafleur opting, opting to receive, march down the field, score yeah. a touchdown. A little bit of yeah. anxiety in the building. Aaron Jones Perce- three rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. To just wipe the floor with them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I just truck texted me that exact thing when that happened. Does he deserve to be that? And I was like, yeah, for sure, you have to. He's the next, you know, dynasty quarterback for the Packers on a young team. You're gonna pay him. Um, he's not gonna be the highest paid quarterback forever. That'll change soon. So yeah, yeah, and uh, shout out to David Mulligetta. Dave, this guy yeah. is just continues to just get his players paid like who, uh, heavily. Who else? I, 
He's the I'm guy not. that um, for Deshaun Watson had the historic two hundred and thirty uh, million dollars fully guaranteed. He's got a, a long list. He, he is considered the best agent in the NFL, and um, he he just continues to work magic for contracts and getting getting his guys paid. So shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Um, anything else come on the news that you guys noticed over the last day or so that you wanted to mention? Um, I like the Ray Davis hype. A lot of a lot of Ray Davis hype, but news wise, no. Um, Just geez, basic training know. camp, uh, you know, hype. We we could do a training camp hype train session uh, mm-hmm. in another episode once we gather all the uh, stuff. But yeah, it's you know. Training camp has started and and you know hype is going around so don't look too much into it. Um, but today we are talking NFC South breakdown and here we go. We are getting into it. Let me. Uh, I think I messed up there. There he is. Hey, here we go. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're talking Falcons first. We're talking the Atlanta Falcons. They bring in Kirk Cousins. You have incredible athletic playmaking young talent on the team you got Bijan robinson we got drake london kyle pitts so much hype is going into the falcons this season i'm buying into it i really really like the falcons this year i think um they're kind of set up for uh, a very very successful season however i'm not as big as uh coles is as on the Falcons. so why don't you give a, a quick breakdown on on uh, the narrative around the falcons um, I just think that like they got the perfect fit for how they need, like what they need for all those guys to break out. I think Bijan's probably the most athletic running back. Drake London is a top five pure talent receiver in the NFL. And then Pitts is number one in terms of athleticism from the tight end position. So they just need someone that can get the ball in their hands to facilitate. And I think that's what you're going to see like, I don't really understand how Kirk is QB 18, I guess coming off injury in a new situation, but like he's never had these types of weapons before. Um, He's had JJ, um, but like in terms of pure athleticism from every position, he's got probably the top guy. Uh, So I think it's going to be a very explosive offense their defense is good enough in a really bad division so i think you just once you just start beating up on your entire division um you know i have been losing to some of the better teams in the league at eagles chiefs um probably split with the bucks but other than that you win every single divisional game so if you're five and one in the division um you play the seahawks non-con or i guess that's college uh, uh you, you play the seahawks in, out of your division oh cowboy team at home that i think will be softer than they were last year on the road to the broncos you're not really like chargers that schedule's to me pretty cake mm-hmm. um all across the board so between a breakout of your offense like when it's just getting the ball into playmakers hands it's not like there's going to be this huge learning curve it's simple it's like let's learn the offense the playbook let's instill it and then just building momentum throughout the year so i don't know that there's going to be this like huge kirk cousins has to get used to his new weapons type of learning curve that you expect it's just let's take care of business and mow down this easy schedule which i think they'll do uh, and they'll be one of the top teams in the NFC. And then it comes down to, like, are we able to beat some of the best teams in the NFL, which I think they'll probably fall short of this year. Um, but, yeah, their team's great. Shane, what do you what do you got here? Me and you both are, are accurate – or not accurate – in the same page with 10 and 7. <laughs> He's yeah, wrong. Know. We're right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, we are no, accurate. We are yeah, accurate. <laughs> quick, quick, quick comment. I just, I, I really like the Falcons <laughs> and go and looking at the schedule, I wanted to add a couple extra wins. It was just hard for me to find those spots. So Shane, um, we both have the same record here. Talk to me about your schedule breakdown and what you saw there. 
So real quick, because one of my favorite sayings on this show with past year is when I was called the most aware on the show. Oh, and so now so this weird. may be up there as my second favorite moment of going forward. So we are we are accurate. Yeah, well, I, I'm I was not I'm glad you continued to build on that because I'm not done with how that word came into your brain in that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't have an explanation. That's the only one that's going to stay in my memory bank for now for the rest of the year. I was just fully not expecting that. It was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, the in thing terms I of like, <laughs> I, I I don't even want to like try to justify for you. I, I am going to because I'm just such a nice friend. Truck. Yeah. Um, you guys are the closest to the win total that Vegas has of nine and a half. So if you're defining accuracy by being close to Vegas's win total, then yes, you guys are the most accurate. However, that's maybe not where we were going with that, but that's, that's my defense for truck. A couple yeah. things though, like 13 and four, if that were to happen, like you could be looking at the number one seed in the NFC. Yeah, I, I think mean, it'll be close. That they'll be that's right there, I would think. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like that, you know, a couple of things. So they've got a rookie head coach and but they brought over a very experienced offensive coordinator and Zach Robinson who when he was with the Rams was very creative and used Todd Gurley in a very creative way, rushing and receiving. So that's part of why I'm much higher. I'm still high on B. John Robinson this year. I'm not lowering him. I'm probably taking him even higher in the top five overall. Um, but the thing I like also is two things. Like I like their offensive line. I think it's ranked fifth heading into this year. And they were good last year. They returned all five of their starters. And then let's just say, though, in the middle of the season, Kirk Cousins does get hurt or something bad happens with his um, with his injury again or something, I feel much more confident in Michael Penix coming in and keeping, keeping that team afloat to win the division, given all of the weapons around him and given such a high experience level he has coming in as a rookie. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, you know, a lot of people said he was NFL ready. So uh, sitting behind Kirk Cousins for a half a year, if that was to happen, I think they'd be in a pretty good spot with him. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think they're fully capable of achieving what Mike has laid out on the table there with 13 to 4. I think they're very much capable of doing it. Yeah, so. I'm looking up divisional wins because I think like 5 and 1, I, I would almost lock them in for that. Yeah, so you can get over three and a half divisional wins for minus 120 for the Falcons. I like that. that. That's an absolute smash max. Can you bet can you make type. note of that when we when we do our uh, futures and that because yeah, that I was one right say there like is... four and two I'd be extremely confident in just because like split bucks and then like I I, I as you'll see I have the Saints at three and fourteen. Um, I just think they have the worst coach in the NFL, and I think that they're they don't really have anything in my mind. Like I don't look at anything on the Saints anymore, and I'm like, they have the best Blank. secondary in the in the division. Yeah. Um, like they maybe once had some serious strengths, and maybe I'm just overlooking them. To me, they're going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL this year. Um, Sorry if you're listening to this, any of my LSU friends. But <laughs> first Panthers at Cowboys versus Eagles at Falcons at Chiefs. I, I spaced out a little bit. That was kind of a burp, sorry. I spaced out a little bit there um, when Shane was talking because I found this, th this DraftKings bet that they have. It's called Drive for Week 5. <laughs> And it is wins after five regular season games. And I was like, oh, man, I know I have the Saints basically, yeah, losing going Owens, losing their first six games. So you can get that at zero wins for 
plus 800, eight to one odds. Ooh. And if I'm looking at this schedule and you're at Cowboys, at Falcons, at Chiefs, and then verse Eagles, mm-hmm. you're kind of getting this opening game at home, sure, against the Panthers, sure, like should be a rocking building. But you're in my mind, you're basically getting like eight to one odds on that game. I would feel very comfortable if they come out 0 and 1 that they're going to lose these four. And yeah. in fact, we all have them losing those four. So essentially, I look at that as getting the Saints, getting the Panthers at plus 800 on that game. I'll probably mm-hmm. be on that, probably be, sprinkle a little bit on that as well. Okay. Well, before we dive too much into the Saints, let's finish up with the Falcons and um, start talking about their fantasy relevant players. Uh, we got Kirk Cousins, quarterback 18 in round 12. To me, I, I think Mike and I had talked about it briefly before, but Kirk Cousins at quarterback 18, it, I feel like he shouldn't be that low. Maybe it is because of him coming off of that injury. But when he plays a fully healthy season, he throws for 4,000 yards, and he is right around quarterback 10. So, you know, I, I'm fine taking Kirk Cousins later on in drafts in round 12 as either a QB2 I'm not too confident in him as him as my quarterback one, but Shane, what do you think? Yeah, I think with those weapons, let's not forget like through the, the first eight weeks before he got hurt, like he led the league in passing touchdowns. He was first or second in passing yards. And he's got, I think, a better overall set of weapons here in Atlanta. So, yeah, I don't understand. That is really, really low. Um, like, I, I would – you're talking about – I'm trying to think who some of the guys that they'd, yeah, they'd have ahead of him, but, I mean, that seems – I'll pull it up right now. Pretty egregious that – I mean, that – if for example, let me lay out a scenario. If I take uh, Jaden Daniels as my QB1, Kirk Cousins will be a heavy target of mine, someone that's got a nice high floor to pair with him. All the quarterbacks above him, Justin Herbert, Caleb Williams, Trevor Lawrence, Jared Goff, Tua, Jaden Daniels, Brock Purdy, Jordan Love, Kyla Murray, and then and then that approaches that top 10 range. So he's like the perfect guy to pair with like a Jaden Daniels in my mind. Mm-hmm. Or even like if I if I got stuck with Jared Goff, like I'm I'll t- I'll take Kirk Cousins too yeah. and kind of switch off between the two of them based on matchups. But Mike, what do you think? Are you drafting Kirk Cousins in round twelve? Yeah, um, maybe. Um, I, I obviously just spoke extremely highly of them. Yeah, if, like there's value there, and that's how the draft unfolds. I'm typically Josh Allen. I have a ton of Caleb Williams. Kirk Cousins might just be in a little bit of a dead zone for me. Um, yeah. Just like because I typically don't draft more than one quarterback and redraft I don't think this year I might get grab like a late Bryce Young or Daniel Jones um but like I'm not against it I think he's gonna have a good year I I don't I don't know the way that I look at quarterbacks in redraft in the past at least is like get an elite one I I pretty much always have Josh Allen so at that point you're not really getting a backup right yeah um but as Shane mentioned, like having him in that Jaden Daniels spot, that would be a great spot. Typically, he goes before Caleb, so like maybe as a as a safe option behind Caleb. Yeah, um, I think he has a great year. As I mentioned, I just uh, yeah, I, he's in a, like a dead zone for me. Almost like those, almost like those Evan Ingram, um, Jake Ferguson. I like those guys, but you probably won't see them on any of my teams. Mm-hmm. We lost truck. Um, there we there go. he is. <laughs> yeah, so he's just in, I I feel like he's kind of in a dead zone for me. Like I just typically have quarterbacks set at that point, and I yeah. But, uh, I, I I do think if he plays a fully healthy season, he's going to return value on his on his draft position. Why That's do we all. assume that he's going to get hurt? I I think people are just there's they think there's risk involved with him coming back. He's how old he is. He's what uh, 36? 36, I believe. Yep. 
Third, yeah, I mean, uh, fantasy he's not going to be taking a bunch of hits unless this line is just horrible because they're going to be getting the ball out fast. Shane you know? said, didn't yeah. you say they're, they're great five right now? Yeah, yeah. They return yeah, so, all their starters. They were third in the league in pass blocking last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, so, so he's not. And then really, you got to. Then you have a really strong run game with Bijan Robinson, who we'll talk about next. He's being drafted as RB2. Uh, he's my RB1. <laughs> Mike, he's your RB1. Shane, where do you have him? Uh, he was one or two. I, 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 yeah, I have to look. Yeah, to me, he's a smash pick in, in the first round. Like, uh, I mean, No, he's my RB1 also. We were okay, consensus. we're all unanimous then. He is our RB1 going into the season, yep. taking him early. Uh, probably after those uh, four wide receivers, four or five, however you want to put it. But he's right in that, uh, you know, six overall spot on in drafts for me. It depends your league. Like he could be the one on one in a two wide receiver league for me. Absolutely. Um, he's probably, you know, if you can start four wide and it's a PPR, he's probably my fourth off the board. I'd go Chase Lamb. Garrett Wilson and then probably Bijan, but that's a wide receiver heavy league and he's 104. So most leagues, if they're not that wide receiver heavy, I'm thinking about him after Jamar Chase. So yeah, I couldn't be higher on Bijan. I think they're going to unleash his full potential, which is, you know, the sky's the limit. Yeah. And to me, Tyler Algier is, is not even in consideration, basically going undrafted in my opinion. Not much yeah. conversation there. Uh, and then Drake London. Drake London being as uh, drafted as wide receiver 11 in the second round. Uh, I am all on that. Drake London, uh, I have him in my uh, firmly inside my top 10. Uh, I believe he's my wide receiver uh, six or seven, I believe. Yeah, I he's inside my top. This. He's inside my top 10 also. Look at my phone. Uh, I think I have him as wide receiver seven, but I'll have to check. I do have him as wide receiver seven. So, yeah, I'm I'm fine taking him in the back end of the first, uh, as I've done in, in a couple of our mock drafts that we do on the channel. If you haven't checked those out, go check them out. But, yeah, I, I, I can't draft enough Drake London. And a lot of people say that's a hype pick, but I, I just think looking at he was a, he was a top ten draft pick coming in with, with – with Kirk Cousins, who we saw what Kirk Cousins was able to do with Justin Jefferson. Am I saying Drake London is as good as Justin Jefferson this year? Not exactly, but I'm expecting that type of production. He's going to be heavily targeted. He's very, very athletic, so he's going to make these incredible catches. And I just I think he's going to end up as a top 10 wide receiver when it's all said and done. Yep, I, I, I agree. I have um... – I'm targeting him for sure in leagues, um, especially if he falls in that second round. He'll be if I'm on. Yeah, I mean, if I'm on the back end of a draft and he falls in the second round, he's my pick. London, Saquon, Devonta Adams is like the order that I'm targeting in the second round. So he's yeah. on that list. What I mm-hmm. love in the back end of the first and early second is kind of pairing up like a Harrison Jr. with London like that pairing of the the rookie who I do think is going to be great. And then I think, you know, the veteran who's about ready to explode to the upper echelon. Yeah. In terms of breakout players, like he's on the top of my list, Drake London, yep. like he's poised for a breakout. Everything is pointing in that direction. So, um, but I do find, I find it interesting. Darnell Mooney is wide receiver 71 in round 15. Um, you know, we're so high on the Falcons. We saw what a wide receiver two looks like with Kirk Cousins. Jordan Addison last year uh, was was great, was catching touchdowns. Darnell Mooney coming from the Bears, he's a talented wide receiver, and he can get the job done. So I think wide receiver 71 is too low for him, and he's someone I'd be willing to draft in the last round or something as a flyer because I do think he's going to produce. I think he's going to have games where he's – is starter worthy in a flex. So I, I I don't know. What do you guys think about Darnell Mooney? Yeah. He seems to be almost like forgotten about, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, you see people taking like wide receiver threes on teams or, or fours even ahead of him in drafts. And like, let's not forget. I mean, he has put up a thousand yards 
uh, in a season before, and that was in Chicago. Um, and like you've seen, we've seen Kirk Cousins produce two top 24 wide receivers. I think it was two different years he did it. And while I don't expect Mooney to be a top 24, but if he's like a top 40, he's still going to smash his ADP or top 36. You know, he's going to smash this ADP. Absolutely. Yeah, I think he's uh, definitely a value at that um, where he's getting drafted. So I'm looking at him. Um, I think he's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And then Kyle Pitts, he's one of my favorite tight end uh, draft picks in the fifth round. Um, Always targeting Dalton Kincaid in the fourth. But if I miss out on Kincaid, I am like hyper targeting Pitts in the fifth. I love the way my teams look after a draft. When I go early wide receiver, uh, you know, a hero RB, and then end up with Kyle Pitts in round five, I couldn't be happier with with the way that my team looks after that. So Kyle Pitts, we've seen him have a thousand yard season as a tight end. We we know that coming into the league, he was considered one of the most athletic candidates coming out of college, and you know he just hasn't gotten a good shake. I think Kirk Cousins loves throwing to his tight end. And Kyle Pitts is another one of those guys that are on the top of my breakout list. I just can't – I can't draft enough Drake and Kyle Pitts. It's just well, definitely – Let's not forget, like, when he did do that, 1,000 yards in a season, that was his rookie year. Like, there's only been one other tight end in NFL history to do that. So, I mean, yeah, that shows his ability to do it yeah. as a rookie. Yeah, I think he's my tight end, too. So obviously, if it's not Kincaid, it's Pitts for me as well. Um, I, I have spoke highly about everyone on the Falcons, and I'll continue to do so. I think they're going to have an outstanding year. They're going to be one of the more fun fantasy teams to watch. So I'll be like, I'll be looking for all of these guys on all my teams. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think that's enough about the Falcons. Let's move on down to the Buccaneers. Can we do a, a TV timeout like we did the other day? Yeah, let's uh, take a quick commercial break. <laughs> I'll be back. And we're back. So like I said, let's uh, transition to the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you could scroll down there, Mike. The Buckies. There we go. Um, yeah, Shane. what? go ahead. I asked... Uh, just this, uh, during the commercial break, I asked Shane O'Mac and, and Truck how many days there were till NFL football. Thirty nine is what we said. Thirty nine days. The reason I ask is because I wanted to bring up a, a a hypothetical for Shane O'Mac. If Shane O'Mac, if it was Sunday morning right now, we were about to watch football. Would mm-hmm. you? So in order to jump to football right now today Mm -hmm. would you give up sex for 39 days for 39 days and i just it's just it's just starting it now it's just starting it today yeah yeah it's not like no no (laughs) no (laughs) this football's still gonna happen like if you're saying like okay it's like football's not gonna happen Ever again. Uh, I can hold out for 39 days for football to come. I cannot hold out 39 days not come. Yeah. Okay. Funny word choice there. Um, Yeah. yeah. And and then we have, uh, um, I think actually when this episode comes out, there will probably be 34 days left until football. Yeah. And I believe this episode is releasing on the day of the Hall of Fame game where the Bears take on the Texans. So, Dude, if you're watching this, days is not a lot of days. Like, um, no. no, and Shane, not. I would agree with you with that same that same answer because I like like as much as I want football to start now. I, these next 39 days of just like news, um, drafts, like analysis. This is to me some of the most fun. Obviously, being able to see and watch is. Is what it's all about, but I love the the, the anticipation, the, grind, the, the build grind up. and the preparation. This beforehand. is this is the fantasy foreplay. Yeah, right? that's a great way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> and plus, yeah. like the season. I mean, it seems like it goes by so fast, right? Like, oh yeah, seventeen weeks. Just yeah, you blink, Sundays. you blink, and it's week seven. You're like, wait, yeah. what the hell is going on? Um, <laughs> 
So anyway, let's... like that's because <coughs> every week I'm like <coughs> Thursday. I'm just, Thursday is all I'm waiting for. Yeah. Once Thursday comes, I can watch football again. And then Friday, you know, whatever. Friday just you're getting ready for Saturday looking at college football games and then Sunday's here and it's like, all right, Monday, you know, it's it's most of the week. It is. There's only yes. a couple of days where you're like, all right, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm just and Friday for Thursday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Friday's in it though. Like so Friday's just a part of it in my mind. Like, yeah, there's not a game necessarily or like a huge game. Week on, one but... this year there's a game Friday night. Oh. I believe it's that Eagles game that's in like Brazil, I think. The, the or something. Oh, game you're right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right. That is a Friday game. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, that was our quick our, our little our little segment. Yeah. Anybody post, listening, post if, you, if you have a different yeah, opinion on that, break. comment, make the comment in the comment section that you would do that trade. Yeah. But right now I think the show consensus is no. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because we just got we got the we got these thirty nine days to grind. It's fun. Um, we're all in the same kind of range here. We're all accurate, as Truck would say, on the Bucks. <laughs> um, let's see what their win total is here in Vegas. But we, I'm at the eight and nine mark. Truck is as well. Shane O'Mac seven and ten. So we're all expecting kind of a down year for them right what was their 10 they they went nine and eight last year and they won the division Mm -hmm. okay their win total this year is sorry what the heck (laughs) chase brown continues to take the majority of reps at running back Mm. is moss hurt right now or something not that I know of. Seven and uh, seven and a half is the win total yeah. for the Bucks right now. For the Bucks, right okay. There. We are right there on it. Yep. Um, I don't really know. My little like overview right now of how I look at the Bucks season is, I thought they perf- overperformed last year expectations. And I just don't expect them to do that again. I, I know um, I like a couple of these guys to have a good year. Like I like Godwin being drafted as the wide receiver 37. I'm t- probably going to see a fair amount of Godwin on my teams. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Evans, I'm kind of a fade on him this year because I like Malik Neighbors. I like DJ Moore, those types of guys more than Evans. Um Always like Rashad White. What was he top ten last year? And I believe so. Drafted outside of that, so you know I think he has a comparable year to last year. But as, as a whole, I just think this team. We know what we're going to get out of them, and I just think it's going to be the same exact product, just maybe a little bit less. Yeah, I think the little bit less for me comes from the loss of Dave Canales. You know, yeah. running that team and running that offense. I think. He kind of added a lot. I mean, you saw what he did with Gino. You saw what he – Baker had his best year ever last year across the board <laughs> when you look at all of his stats and metrics. And so why they did bring – you know, they're bringing in an offensive coordinator that was at Kentucky, I believe, from last year. So I just – that's the main difference for me. Yeah, and I mean, they kind of have a, a, a decently tough schedule, you know, uh, at Lions versus Eagles – um, Ravens, Falcons, Chiefs, 49ers, like that stretch of games right there too. Like it, it's a tough schedule. And mm-hmm. I, I think I think they're a decent team. That's why I have them just right around that uh, 500 mark. Um, I don't think much changes from last year. Like I, I think they're going to – they they are one of the teams that wins games they shouldn't win. And any given week um, they have a chance of winning. And uh, I, I think this is kind of right where they're going to end up is right around that eight and nine. Uh, you know, maybe they win an, an extra game and go nine and eight like they did last year. But I definitely don't think they won the division. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to have a ton to talk about here with the box. Uh, mm-hmm. Really this division as a whole, just because I think this is the worst division in football. So, um, yeah, I'm drafting Godwin. I'm drafting Rashad White. 
and that's probably about it. Kate Otten may be late in best ball, but not. I'm not looking at him in a redraft league at all. So, mm-hmm. well, you know, someone I we'll just talk about Baker Mayfield first. Uh, getting drafted as quarterback twenty one in round thirteen, he's someone I'd be willing to take at that draft position. Being drafted outside the top twenty, he finished as the quarterback ten last year, threw for over four thousand yards. Now, the quarterback 10 finish, obviously, we had a historic amount of quarterbacks getting injured last year, so that's going to play into him being a top 10 quarterback. But still, being able to throw for 4,000 yards, uh, is, to me, is is kind of a mark that I wasn't expecting for Baker on the Bucks last year. And uh, I'd be I'd be interested in taking him as a QB2, um, in my opinion. Shane, what do you think about Baker? Yeah, that's the ones I kind of struggle with when, I, when we were just talking about it is if you're looking for a QB2 is, you know, that is is how do you evaluate and who you take in between Baker versus uh, Cousins? Yeah. Um, they're so similar to me um, right now. I mean, he did have, I think it was eight or nine top 12 finishes last year. So, I mean, he really outperformed. He gets everybody back plus – you know, they added Jalen McMillan in the draft, who I like a lot of. Uh, they had Graham Barton. They drafted in the first round, which is stud uh, offensive lineman from Duke that they can move around. Mm-hmm. So they didn't lose anything on the offense. It's just how much do you value the loss of Canales as a, call, a play caller? Yeah, Very true. Very true. Um, and then Rashad White being drafted as RB13. Mike spoke on it. Um, outside of the top 10 he's one of those guys that i think are is a fringe top 10 guy i have him inside my top 10 i think he deserves to be drafted there i'm willing to take him in round four especially if i go three wide receivers in the first three rounds having rashad white as my rb1 totally fine with he's kind of like right on that bottom uh there's kind of a tear break after him as far as running back ones go so uh, I do like him. And then Bucky Irving, I'm not big on Bucky this year, RB 59 and round 16. Like I'm not even wasting a, a last round pick on him in drafts. I'm, I don't think, you know, uh, Rashad White is the passing down back. So it's not like Bucky's going to come in and catch a bunch of balls. Rashad White had over 60 receptions last year. So I, I'm not not too big on Bucky, but uh, I give me all the Rashad White on my teams. Yeah, the guy, the, the the choice kind of I struggle with when I've seen, you know, a lot of mocks right now is White versus Jacobs and that same kind of rounds where they're going. That's mm-hmm. the one I, that I kind of struggle with right now. Which, where do you lean? I've got Jacobs one spot ahead of him, but I don't know. I may be switching those rankings because I don't know if this year is going to be much different. I think White's still going to have a lot of those dump off passes from Baker, right? Yeah. I, mean, I yeah. don't think that's going away. No, definitely not. And I also like the backup running back. Marshawn Lloyd, to me, uh, in the shadows of Josh Jacobs, means so much more than Bucky Irving behind Rashad White. You know what I mean? Marshawn Lloyd is yeah. going to eat into that timeshare, I think. So, And I don't think Bucky is going to very much. But uh, And then wide receivers, Mike Evans. I, I Mike said he's fading him. I am not. I, I'm drafting Mike Evans. He ended up as wide receiver seven last year in PPR formats, over 1,250 yards, 13 touchdowns. The guy is an animal in the red zone, clearly has a good connection with Baker. I don't think much changes this year. Uh, maybe his touchdown mark comes down, but I, you know, I think he's a lock to have over 1,000 yards like he has every single season in the NFL. So I'm totally fine drafting uh, Mike Evans in the third round. Shane, what do you think? So Evans, you know, you know what Mike Evans is to me? Mike Evans is my Austin Eckler, where like each year I'm waiting for the downfall to hit. And this, and I'm like, okay, well, he, he, he proved me wrong. But then last year, everyone was finally correct on Austin Eckler. And I just, it's the same thing this year. I'm like, is this the year where we're finally going to be right on Mike Evans? Uh, but I'm similar to Coles. Like for me, it's just more, I like Malik Neighbors in round three over him, DJ Moore. I just like some of the <clears throat> other guys' upside youth over Evans for me in drafts. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that fall off from Evans just because I think he's a physical freak. Like mm-hmm. he's he's like he's not an Eckler. Eckler's a small running back, you know. Um and Evans is a generational talent at wide receiver, so like 
his uh, the the only thing I I think he'll retire a buck at this point, but like I could mm-hmm. see him just being like that Keenan Allen like mentor slash still have a role, but just not be wide receiver one anymore. Evans uh, he he's gonna have a good year, and Truck, you're saying like you're drafting him, but I would actually guarantee that you don't draft him on any of your teams this year because you're so high on DJ Moore and DJ Moore is being drafted behind Evans. So that's why I'm saying he's like, he's a fade. Like I I know you're targeting him, but I just would guarantee he's not on your teams because DJ I, I get what you're Unless saying. It's a it, Chicago league and people are steaming someone like DJ Moore, and then you're sitting there with them. But like, yeah, what I meant you, by that when I'm drafting him <laughs> in round uh, round three is if, if DJ Moore has gone in certain situations, I am totally okay with drafting him at his ADP in round three. I think Mike Evans, I would, he's someone depending on where the draft falls. Of course, every draft is going to be different, but he's someone I'm not overlooking at his ADP. And you do have Evans over more in your rankings. Rank oh, really? I thought yeah. you were like really high on more. So maybe I, I read your rankings wrong. Evans no, I, over, I think I've, I've been I've been high on yeah, Evans. For Evans quite over some Moore time. and Adams Nate. for you. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. I like what he does in the red zone. He scores that. touchdowns. Thirteen touchdowns last year. It's just I, I don't think much changes. I think Baker's going to be looking to get him the ball all the time, and uh, I I want Evans on my teams. So the one we were talking on about, more. the one thing we talked about is like there any camp news? I I did remember this. I was reading yesterday. So. Yeah, they are going to move Chris Godwin back into the slot exclusively, they said. Right. And I can't remember. I'm going to pull a Coles here. I don't remember the exact stat, but <laughs> his his fantasy points per game were like, I want to say a half point more per game, fantasy points per game when he was out of the slot versus not in the slot position. So sounds like he's going to be exclusively there. So that's another guy is just kind of forgotten about, it seems like, you know, you know, when you get to that round eight range um, in PPR leagues, that could be a kind of sneaky value. Oh, definitely. Yeah. He had over a thousand yards last year and we expect him to take a step up playing out of the slot. So yeah. And wide receiver 37 round seven. I'm, I'm taking that. I'm taking that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like I'm the lowest on Evans and according, according to our rankings, um, and I just have them behind, like, Mari Cooper, those kind of guys, DK Metcalf. Um, and then Godwin is someone that, like, I don't have – what is he, 37? So I have him at 32, right around his ADP, a little bit higher. Um, it's like the way that I view this team is kind of how I've talked about it. Like, they're probably – their ADPs are all probably pretty sharp because we know what the offense was last year and it's going to be pretty much just running that back. So like your ADPs will be sharper on a team like this than they will be on the Falcons where we think they're going to have an outstanding year, but it's more speculation, not as much like product that we've already seen on the field. Yeah. All right, and then, yeah, Kate Otten, you talked about it. I don't think we really need to go in depth there. We can move on to the Saints if you guys are good with that. Mm-hmm. All right, um, so <laughs> we – as what's let's just start with what's the uh, Vegas – what does Vegas say about the Saints win totals this year? <laughs> I'm going to guess. Can I get a guess before you say it? Let's yeah. take gonna, a guess. Shane, I'm going to say – I, I think they got think more of them, and I'm going to say it's seven. Seven and a half? Yeah, seven and a half, seven, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yep. Oh, look at that. On the money, Shane. Nice job. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I just – I think the coach, Dennis Allen, is the worst coach in the NFL, I think. You have 6-11 and 11 here, Shane O'Mac? I That's my – I'm on the right. Shane's you're, on the left. You're the Panthies. In the middle. You're the Panthies. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm the Panthies, yeah. 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 My uh, spelling, I, I typed a little sense. too fast, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, yeah I got fast. It, that's that's what it is. He's too fast. He's. Too Do you think I honestly sp- misspelled the Panthers too, as the Panthers and just too good at typing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mike. You're you're uh, you got me. You got me. Um, yeah, I have met six and eleven. Um, I I think this is where they're going to end up. I think they're going to be under that that Vegas line at seven and a half, and I'm giving them benefit of the doubt here. I I think the Saints 
are a team that that can fight and win games that they shouldn't win. And my Buccaneers, as uh, as we're Canners. fixing those, yeah, yeah, that one was a spelling. That was an actual spelling error, not like the Panthers, the Buccaneers. That was a, a spelling error. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I think they're going to win games they shouldn't win, and I just I don't like the where their the direction the team is going. Uh, Derek Carr is this is probably his last year at quarterback, and Dennis Allen. I I honestly think that they're going to start. I have him at uh, one and six, right? One and six to start the season. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to fire Dennis Allen halfway through the season. I think he's yeah. going to be out. They're going to bring an interim head coach, whoever that is. I have no idea, but um, I think they could string together some wins after that. So that's kind of where I'm at with them, six and eleven. What do you about? What about you, Shane? Yeah, I just don't think much of them. I mean, when you've got a what I feel is a when you have a bad coaching and bad quarterback combo, I mean, that's just setting you up for a stinker of a season. And for them, it'll be perfect. It'll be great because they are going to move on from Carr, and then that gives them a shot at either Carson Beck or Shadur Sanders, one of those Ewers. guys, you know, whoever's going to pop up maybe. Um, so it'll be perfect for finish for them. They bring in an offensive coach um, to kind of help groom that new quarterback. Um, so it'll be perfect for them. I am honestly was shocked that Allen kept his job in the offseason. That was definitely one of the surprises no to me. Yeah. So. Yeah, I thought that was an indication of, like, we're going to ship it next year and try to get a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they did end up 9-8. and eight. They did uh, barely uh, missed out on, on winning the division, so I think that may have had something to do with them riding it out for this next season, but I think it's a bad move. Yeah, I don't have much to say here on the Saints. I think they're going to have a horrible season. They have a tough schedule out the gate. You see I have them at 0-6 to start. Um, if they don't win that Pan- Panthers game, they're going to lose their first five for sure. Um, so I don't know. I'm off on the Saints. I don't like Derek Carr. I think Kamara's aging a little bit. He should still have a pretty, pretty good role. Um, an elite like workload this may be his last year where he has an elite workload but I just don't know that I trust the team enough to come up with wins he's gonna have to be like a PPR only target for me I'm guessing Um, fading Alave at his price tag in the second round because I like Devonta Adams more I like Drake London more Um, and then Juwan Johnson's probably the only guy that I'm drafting on this team not in redraft again like i've always i I always talk about how my my brain's broken by best ball because that's really all i you know that's that's my fantasy football the the majority of my fantasy football portfolio is going to be best ball moving forward so like he's someone i target in best ball but i'm not going to draft him in redraft because i'll have tight end figured out by then and i won't need a second one yeah yeah Derek carr should be undrafted alvin kamara to me, I mean, last year still at seventy five receptions. So when you're talking about PPR, like he's still gonna he's still gonna produce numbers. Uh, ended up as a running back twenty four last year, being drafted as RB seventeen. You know, I maybe if he falls a few spots, depending on how the draft unfolds, I'd be fine taking him, uh, taking a chance on Alvin Kamara. But he's the only one. Chris Olave being drafted as wide receiver twelve in the second round, I think, is one of the worst second round picks that you can make. Um, I'm, I don't understand the hype on Chris Olave. I get, he's a talented guy and coming from, uh, the Ohio state university, um, uh, Chris Olave, but I, I just, well, I'm, the hype is he's just like, a, he's kind of a lock for a thousand. Let's see what he had last year. He had like what I would have thought as a bad year last year in terms of like, how yeah, eleven hundred twenty-three yards. He, he he's a lock for a thousand. He had one hundred thirty-eight targets, eleven twenty-three, five touchdowns. So obviously the touchdowns haven't really come for him yet. But if that bumps up to eight ever in his career, then he's, you know, what was he wide receiver? Wide receiver twenty-four. Twenty-four last year. So yeah. Yeah, I wide mean, receiver twenty-four no, 12, and sixteen. I have PPR. 16. Mm. Uh, PPR no, that, that, that's uh never mind. That was Scott Fish's scoring. 
Okay. Let's go to a more standard one. <laughs> yeah, I, I see why, 24. Why would that be? First downs? I don't know. Um, if fantasy points per game, he was getting about 14 and a half. Kind of a safe safe pick, I guess. I'm just not excited about taking him in the second round. I will be fading Chris no. Lave. And if you're in a world where they get man. off to, let's say, a one and eight, two and nine, something just atrocious, like it wouldn't surprise me if they're like, all right, well, let's get Spencer Rattler some reps here. And, you know, that can't be great for him either, for Chris Olave. No. I have him at PPR 16 on our dynasty, which I think our dynasty – league has pretty standard scoring on sleeper dude he's ppr wide receiver 16 so okay not sure uh, what the uh and i don't what like... are you what are you looking at um on fantasy pros yeah i don't know sleeper has him as a ppr full ppr wide we'll receiver go with sleeper fought wide receiver 16 and at that at that finishing position in a year where it's like they did, they weren't that sexy in any area. I don't think they were great. You would have thought Alave kind of had a down year. That's, you know, if there's any, if there's any tick forward, then he's a, he's gonna probably. To me, he's got to catch touchdowns, to and I, I'm not sure they're gonna be. They're gonna have very many scoring opportunities with the way I project their team to be. So, yeah. that's kind of the reason why I'm fading him. Yep. Um, all right, I think that's good. You guys good with the Saints? We move on to the Carolina Panthers. Shout out, uh, Carolina Dad. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, Coles, I want elite. you to start with the Panthers. His name's Elite Kennedy, first of all. <laughs> chicka, chicka, before chicka. We go, elite before Kennedy. Before we go anywhere. Chicka, chicka, chicka. Yeah. Okay. What do you you want me to start with them? Yeah, I want you to start with the Panthers. You have them at eight and nine. Shane and I both have them at five and twelve. Uh, I know that you think they're going to take a step forward this year, so I just want to hear you talk about it. Yeah, it looks like you and Shane are accurate again. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to take a big step forward. I think Bryce Young's finally got a what seems like a not a toxic coaching environment around him. He's got a guy that's done nothing but produce good quarterbacks with Canales. Um, Bryce Young is a huge talent, and I think we're going to see it this year. So him at quarterback 27, that's someone I'm targeting basically at every best ball draft. Um, I think Deontay Johnson is a huge step up from his wide receiver one last year in Adam Thielen. Um, I, I think that Deontay is going to have an outstanding year as well. Wide receiver 42, I think he'll be in the top. 25 probably i don't know exactly where i have him on my rankings but um he he's someone outside the top 40 as a as a to be to land in the top 25 he would probably be my pick i, I can't imagine i would have anyone else before him as like someone that can land in the top 25 that's getting drafted that far out um jonathan brooks i think is a league winner We'll see how slowly he starts with coming off that injury. But once he, he steps into an offense that has a ton of um, uh, of production that needs to be absorbed, I think he's going to absorb a lot of that. So, yeah, I just think it's a young team that's going to take a big step forward with a really good coach and in a horrible division and has a relatively soft schedule. If you look at their first, however many games this is, first 10 games before going to buy, you have one. I mean, in terms of like playoff teams this past year, you have zero, but these teams I project to all be in the playoffs. And then outside of that, Commanders, Saints, Broncos, Giants, these are all teams that are just not teams I have projecting high. So that's a pretty cake schedule to start the year. I think they can get some wins. Shane, what about you? Yeah, I in full disclosure, like when I was going into these predicting these games and what the Panthers schedule, I really thought I was going to come out with like eight wins. I really thought that was. Well, they gave I you thought... every opportunity to. Saints, Chargers, Raiders, Bengals, Bears, 
Falcons, sure, that's tough. But then Commanders, Broncos, Saints, Giants, like I don't think you're high on any of those teams. So they, you had every opportunity to throw some I wins just, out there. yeah, when I was just going down, like for me, and we'll get to when I get the AFC West, like I think based off past experience, Jim Harbaugh is going to come in and make the Chargers take them to a whole different level. The coaching, the discrepancy of coaching be, from what he was taking over, what was there for the Chargers, when, and now Jim Harbaugh is like worth three wins in my mind. So I think they're much better. Um, but it, yeah, just going game by game, it was really hard for me. Like, you know, I'm just picking out very specific ones, like at the Commanders, like in a past, I think that could have been a win, but I believe that much in Jaden Daniels and that team and that coaching staff that they've assembled like I, I want to but also so going back to the chargers so you're saying there's a huge coaching improvement which i agree with but also like they lost they they, they lost all of their keenan allen eckler like they're they're a whole different team right there and it's not like they reloaded with any talent right now so they're still like i i don't know that harbaugh is going to step in and have a playoff team in front of them when they they're not going to be a playoff team no, until not the, a playoff I, I, I completely agree. They're not or a just, playoff team. Or just 500 ball. Like, right. I don't think they're going to be, I think they're going to be better than, you know, maybe seven, eight wins. But I, until they, they're not, what I, what I was saying about the playoff team, they're not going to be a playoff team until they get position players in there. It's not going to be Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. It's not going to be Josh Palmer, Lab McConkey, and, dj chark or cqj so i just don't see them as they're gonna they're gonna be the type of team that it can be beaten by anybody i think um and sure coaching will take them uh to, will, will take them above some of these just saints teams or teams that are completely on the uh, aggressively down uh down spiral but i think the panthers at least have pieces in place here it's like all right we can win games so they're just susceptible i think to losing a game like that i think the other component for me is and I, i'll be willing to to admit i was wrong but i don't think bryce young is gonna pan out and be that guy uh i'm just i'm not a believer in him um the coaching will help but i don't think he takes a huge step so I think we'll, 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 we'll do it when we get to the AFC West, but I feel like this is our next pod bet of the season. Who I'm has ready. more wins on the seasons, Chargers versus Panthers? So we might just bookmark this and when we get to the AFC West, and we'll see. But I feel like this is the next pod bet. Pod bet is going to be a spe one specific game. No, no, no. Who on the year who's got who more, more wins, wins? Chargers or Panthers? Oh yeah, I haven't even looked at the Chargers. Yeah, schedule we'll, we'll, yet. yeah we'll, we'll bring it back up when we get there. But I, interesting. We'll, I, I think that'll be in play. See what Vegas says, because you know I'm not going to give you too many. <laughs> <laughs> I would have guessed Chargers is at eight and a half. What did we even mention? What the Panthers are at? What are the Panthers? Uh... Vegas line five and a half for the, for the Panthers. Yeah. Okay. And the chargers are probably seven and a half, eight and a half. Yep. Wow. Yep. So no Shane, uh, <laughs> you're, you're never gonna get me to make a stupid bet. I don't like. But nice luck. try, Shane. Nice try. I needed try. There will always, I'll always be QCing with Vegas. So, so um, but yeah, Bryce Young. I'm not drafting him this year. I don't think uh, he makes the necessary steps this season to be fantasy relevant. However, I do think they figure it out in years to come. Jonathan Brooks is someone that we should be talking about. Uh, RB27 in round eight is recovering from that ACL injury in college back in November. But when he gets fully healthy and in this integrating this offense, to me, he's going to be the guy. And I think he's much better than Chuba Hubbard. Miles Sanders is basically irrelevant at this point, sad to say. And 
Jonathan Brooks is someone I'm dra- I'm, I'd be willing to draft in round eight as long as I have other running backs to play ahead of him. Sad for you to say, Chuck. Yeah, Some sad to say I'm speaking said, for myself yes. because I was so high on him in years past, yes. Okay, yeah, yes. just clarifying that. Yes, so yeah. Jonathan Brooks. Mike, do you want to say anything about Jonathan Brooks? I know you he's are in love. He's your, he, just, Is he a no, my guy a this stud. year for you? Um, I don't know, maybe. I wouldn't know if I'd go that far just because of like the uncertainty of – how quickly he's going to be getting a full workload. If he, if he didn't have an injury and there was a full workload that was going to be guaranteed, not guaranteed from uh, like, let's say if, if he didn't have to, if there wasn't like an injury that he has to overcome and then the, he has to win the full workload, then yes, for sure. But I wouldn't say he's a my guy. I think he's a league winner is probably the bucket I would put him in more because I think legitimately he'll break out late and be like an RB1. So Yeah, we talked about it. I'm always confident that I can make the playoffs. So I grab a guy like Brooks because I'll throw together a playoff team and then to have an RB1 added to my roster late in the season, that's how I win championships, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the best ball stream live show yesterday um we talked about this right like the play is you take brooks in round eight and then in round nine you just you just go straight with a guy like brian robinson or zach moss Devin or singletary Devin gus, singletary, edwards. gus edwards raheem moster even you know somebody that's going to get you those first four weeks a, a high enough uh, floor to get you by until he's ready. And and the second thing is, I think, I think Sanders probably does not end up staying on this team. I think there's a good possibility he's gone it, unless Brooks, they think, unless they say, okay, we may need to put Brooks on the pup, which I haven't heard that, but if he shows anything and he looks like he's going to be okay to handle 10 carries a game, then I think yeah. Sanders could be off the team. You think he'll be playing in, Canada, not Canada. But Probably retire. Maybe go to the XFL, someplace or the UFL, whatever it is now. USFL. I don't think he'll yeah. retire. He's too young. No. no. All right. Well, uh, what about Deontay Johnson? Uh, we talked about Deontay <laughs> wide receiver forty-two, round eight. Like people are so quick to forget what Adam Thielen did at the beginning of the season last year with Bryce Young. I mean, the guy was absolutely on fire i'm gonna pull it up real quick just to reference accurate five, numbers. five top 20 wide receiver finishes in his first six games yeah i mean he was he had huge. in in a four game span even five game span seven catches 11 catches seven catches 11 11 touchdowns in four or five of those games over 100 yards in three of them like he like bryce young can support a wide receiver one. He's shown that in the beginning of the season last year. So now with more time under his belt, I think Deontay Johnson could achieve those types of numbers. And I'm I'm drafting him in round eight, uh, taking him as ADP. I think he outperforms that for sure. Yeah. My camp news from yesterday was they're moving Deontay Johnson all over. They're not just putting him in one spot. They're going to be putting him in multiple spots, giving him some handoffs. I mean, so just doing whatever they can with him. Yeah. And then Xavier Leggett, I mean, as wide receiver 58 in round 12, he's interesting to me. Um, he came from uh, South Carolina and kind of was, if you watch the receiver episode or the receiver series on Netflix, Debo Samuel kind of took him under his wing and was really uh, his support system um, through his last year in college. And, I, you know, Xavier Leggett could be a force to be reckoned with in the NFL in years to come. And he's someone that I'd be willing to take a shot on late in drafts, round 12, 13, 14, you know, depending on how, how he falls. But wide receiver 58 to me, grabbing him like that, it basically free, taking a shot on someone like that. And then uh, Jatavion Sanders, JT Sanders from Texas, right, Mike? How, how do you look in yeah. Texas? How do I look at Texas? How did JT, JT Sanders look at Texas? Oh, he's a great receiving he's, tight end. He's yeah. extremely athletic. Um, so, yeah, I think he's someone that 
like I said earlier about there's so much production that needs to be absorbed. <clears throat> I think he's someone that can absorb that. Um, but I like Tremble too. He's not on this list, but like Tremble's a guy that I would be hesitant on Sanders because I think Tremble is going to have a, a, a pretty solid role too in the offense. So just depends how quickly JT can. Uh, to me, he's one of those guys that like you talk about tight ends takes a little bit to kind of get used to the NFL. Uh, he's probably one of those guys that could fall into that bucket. I don't know that he's going to be a smash year one, but um, the offense is set up for him to be. So if he does come in and learn quickly, then he could be a guy that breaks out. I just think it's Deontay and, and Brooks that – break help Bryce Young kind of find himself in the NFL and and absorb most of the production in this offense so I'm firmly pr planting my flags on those two guys like for me JT is like if you're in dynasty or keeper leagues that's <clears throat> where he comes in at because like his I don't remember the exact stats but like his contested catch rate and his drop rate were like top of the top in last year in college at Texas and then you're looking at probably Deontay Johnson may not be on the team last year. He's just in the last year of a deal and Adam Thielen probably not back. So there could be a decent amount of targets available next year on this team. Good point. Good point. All right. Well, I think that about does it for our NFC South breakdown. I think we all have the Falcons winning the division and the rest of the division being pretty sad. So <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I'm super excited about these divisional breakdowns. I think this is like the most underwhelming one for me because like I just don't have much excitement to pump into any of these teams. Um, I think we know what we're getting from the Bucks. I think the Saints are a sad, sad team this year. It's a full fade for me, which I'm never going to talk too much about full fades. And then, um, you know, I like the Panthers taking a step forward and, and the Falcons being one of the best teams, so... That's just a quick summary of how I feel about that conference as a whole, I, I, or division as a whole. I think in college football, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with everything you just said. I, I do think the Panthers take step forwards. I just don't know if their schedule or if their record is going to reflect it. And um, I think the Saints are going to be bad. And we know what we're getting with the Bucks. And uh, sky's the limit for the Falcons. So mm -hmm. it's a good summary there. Um, but thank you for watching the episode. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Follow us on social media. Check out the Substack, the fantasy .substack. Don't forget to check out Rule One Proteins for all your supplement, all your supplemental needs. And uh, most importantly, buckle up.